But first, don't call it quits. That's what relationship expert Jane Fendelman encourages us to do when it comes to our relationships and we are in a little bit of trouble. Well, today we continue looking at that face-to-face, -face, that green ugly, green-eyed monster, monster jealousy, they jealousy. call it, right? Yes. Yes, which we started last week. And and we started last week and we talked about it that um, what can people do to handle jealousy better? That is such a good question. I'm so glad you asked me what can people do to handle jealousy? The answer is thank you. The answer you. is thank you. Thank you. The first answer is thank you because thank you for loving me in that romantic way. Because remember last week we said romantic love has its roots in lust and possession. Be mine. Whoops. So it's be normal. Mine, A lot of those feelings are normal. Yes. So don't don't be like so don't be that embarrassed if you have some jealous feelings. Exactly. And that's our number two. Don't be embarrassed to admit that you're jealous. It's a normal human emotion. Human beings were made with all these emotions. So being jealous, just another emotion. And it tells you that you're romantically in love with this person. Unconditional love is different than romantic love. Unconditional love, your partner could be with anybody and everybody and you won't mind. And that's, unconditional love is a different kind of love than romantic love. Romantic love is not unconditional. When people come in for counseling and they say, my partner does not love me unconditionally, I say, that's right. Uh -huh. First, they're gonna have a condition that you be a male or a female. Well, for most people. Yeah. <laughs> then they're going to have a condition that you're not an IV drug user. Then they're going to have a condition that maybe you have a car and a job. Right. And so, so the first romantic things you love do. is conditional. That's okay. And the first things we're looking at here to do. Admit you're jealous. Don't be embarrassed that you're jealous. Hey, honey, I'm jealous. I'm jealous. Now, um, then you've got to use adult communication. What people usually do is what, what I call bark and run. Bark and run. I hate your guts, I'm out the door. So don't use bark and run, use adult communication. And uh, we'll, we talked about talking stick once before and we'll probably talk about it again. Create agreements is another one. You need to create agreements. Now, some people are just dating mm -hmm. and have this upfront agreement, we're just dating. We don't have a monogamous commitment. Don't, don't be, people say, well, we had an implied agreement that we weren't seeing other people. No, there's no implied agreements. You need to sit down and verbally state what your commitment is. So are we is. just seeing each other? Are we seeing other people? Yeah, so yeah. have some ground for, rules set. Some people want to have an open relationship, and for some people that works. And, and don't, don't respond <coughs> defensively, right? Don't respond defensively. Now, when you're at a party with your beloved, and he sees you laughing and talking to this guy, and you touch his arm, and you're having a good time, and then after the party, your partner goes, what were you doing talking to that guy? Our usual response is, I wasn't doing anything. You're overreacting. You're too sensitive. Knock it off. You're insecure. And it, d responding defensively does not help because when you're honest enough to say to your partner, I am feeling jealous, what they're saying is, I am feeling so vulnerable that I don't even want to tell you that I'm feeling jealous. I'm embarrassed because we human beings get embarrassed about feeling jealous. So if your partner has the guts to say, I feel jealous, don't say, well, I wasn't doing anything. You're overreacting. Don't do that. Say, beloved, sit down here. Let me hear everything that you have to say. I want to hear all your feelings. So reinforce them. Don't react in, in, in a defensive, defensive manner and attack them. Yes. You're, just, you're just insecure. You're, stu not. you're stupid. You're being foolish. That's now, wrong. what does that mean if you're the cop leave? If you are the cop, like, oh, oh, don't do anything quickly, you do in front of your don't mate. Do, don't do anything. What, what constitutes bad behavior? Don't do anything you wouldn't do right in front of your partner. That's cheating. If you're doing something you wouldn't do in front of your partner, you're cheating. So there's even emotional cheating, like with a friend yes. that you're, oh, okay. Absolutely. So people know this. You know this. Yeah. Now, and, and that leads us to the last one, which is don't, if you, if you can't stop being the cop, then you're going to have to leave the relationship because you won't like who you've become. When we're with a partner who has committed uh, crime uh -huh, and infidelity, right. if after counseling and time it's, not, it's still not healed and you can't stop checking the phone bills and looking through their pockets and checking the collar for lipstick and perfume, if you can't stop doing that, you will be miserable yeah. and you need to gently withdraw and maybe step out of the relationship and reassess if that's a good relationship for you to be in. Right, not too healthy. Okay, yeah. and how do we get in touch with you, Jane? You can call me 602-532-0330 or my website, janefendelman.com, and also email me questions that you want me to talk about on the show and I'd be happy to address them. Okay, and you look great in green, by the way. Thank you, baby. <laughs> okay, good to I see you, sweetie. You. All right. Ready?